Welcome, you're watching the Mutual Fund Show. I'm Tamanna Inamdar and we have a very spe special edition of the show because we have a very special guest in our studios today. Harsha Upadhyay, CIO, Equity and President uh, Kotak Mahindra AMC is with us in our studios and he's talking about their new NFO, the Opportunities Fund. Harsha, first of all, welcome. Uh, great to have you on in NDTV Profit and of course in our studios as always. And let's start first talking about your special opportunity fund. The NFO is on uh, right now. And I think key for our viewers would be, why have you chosen a special opportunities fund? What do you mean by this fund, which of course sits in the rubric of thematic funds? Uh, Tamana, as you said, this is a thematic fund. Uh, where essentially 80% of the investments will have to go into the specific theme. Here we have defined theme as special opportunities and the special opportunities could be coming from events that are happening at the economic front. It could be at the industry level wherein some regulatory changes are happening, policy changes are happening. Those are also special events. Similarly, there could be bottom-up opportunities in certain companies where corporate actions such as mergers, demergers, acquisitions are happening. So any of these could fit into special opportunities in the way that we have defined. So 80% of investments will go into such opportunities over a period of time. And uh, the fund will have both long-term positions which are more related to uh, economic event and an industry event. There could also short-term events which are time-specific based on some corporate action including buybacks, demergers, mergers, etc. So it's a combination of all such opportunities which make up the fund. Okay, so from what you've described and, you know, special opportunities fund even within thematic funds is not a product that you see very often. Uh, I think for uh, those who want to peer review or go and look at options, there are fewer options limited. So, the, Which is why I was wondering, why a special opportunities fund? Is the idea behind it, the investment goal behind it to give yourself enough legroom or enough flexibility to react quickly enough? Yes, uh, in terms of uh, room for investment opportunities, I think there is, as I explained, there is enough and more in terms of a range of opportunities that are available. Along with that, we also believe the current stage of economic development in the country and the state of markets that we are in, there could be larger number of such special events as you go ahead. Because as market grows, as businesses grow, there are also many more corporate events, for example. And anyways, we have been seeing a lot of policy and regulatory changes in various sectors. So these are some of the things uh, which enable a lot more opportunities for this fund. And also, as mentioned, this is going to take more concentrated positions in those opportunities as compared to your diversified fund. Even the diversified equity funds will obviously look at all of this and probably take some positions. But as a proportion, this fund will always have at least 80% invested into such opportunities. So to that extent, as long as we are able to pick those opportunities well, this could potentially be uh, 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 giving higher returns as compared to a diversified fund. As I see that uh, your equity and equity related uh, special situations theme can go up to 100%. Yes. So you're looking at that option as well. This is for an investor with a higher risk appetite? Uh, definitely, all thematic funds would go into a category of higher risk compared to normal diversified equity funds. As it is, equity funds are more risky compared to, let's say, fixed income funds. But even within equity, thematic funds would be uh, slightly more aggressive funds and higher risk uh, uh, funds for investors. Yes, those who are uh, regular investors who understand the volatility of the markets, who understand the particular theme, uh, probably in, in some periods these themes may not work as good as a diversified theme, for example. Mm -hmm. But investors who have a long-term horizon of at least five years and who are slightly more aggressive than a normal regular equity investor, I think this is a good fund to look at. So I was looking at um, you know a couple of funds which are there available, um, which are special opportunities or special situations fund, at least two of them. In the last three years, their average return has been between 16 and 19 percent. Now some would argue in a market that uh, has shown this kind of a performance, a special opportunities fund would look at uh, maybe more robust returns. Just give us a sense because does this depend a lot on the fund manager's own call? This is a very subjective sort of call, right? Which special opportunity you want to bet on and how you want to do it. So this is essentially putting your faith in the fund manager. That would be the way to look at it. Uh, rather than just the fund manager, I would say the entire investment team because yeah. finally the positions are going to be taken based on the research inputs. 
as far as Kotak Mutual Fund is concerned, we have got a very, very strong, experienced research team. And that's been giving us inputs in terms of all our investment opportunities, right? Including the special opportunities. And here in this fund, the portfolio manager will be looking at those specific opportunities and taking those investment bets at a higher proportion. That's how it's different from a normal diversified fund. But definitely special situations, analysis of special situations is going to be more complex uh, compared to a normal investment op opportunity. So to that extent, having a good research team and a knowledgeable research team is definitely a positive. And that's where I think a professional investment manager can add to a lot of that uh, in terms of what he brings onto the table. Can you give us a sense of the kind of returns that you know, you're, you're, you're looking at? And I know you can't give me a specific figure, obviously, but uh, would this beat most thematic funds in your view? Or is that the aim at least? Uh, we would like it to be that way, but it all depends on the outcome over a period of time. But definitely it's going to be more aggressive. Uh, to start with, are we going to target higher returns than our diversified fund? Yes, by nature of uh, the way the theme is defined and the way portfolio is going to get constructed. There is definitely that endeavor in terms of trying to achieve slightly higher returns than uh, diversified funds. But whether it will happen or not, only time will tell as the outcome cannot be predicted today. Yeah. So give me a few examples, Archa, of um, special uh, opportunities or special events. Uh, one would be the budget, for example. Would that be one that you would look at, the union budget, the election which went by? Was that a special event? Give me just a sense of what are the kind of uh, you know, themes that you would look at within this sort of broad parameter of special opportunities? Uh, for example, let's start from the economic front. Hmm. Uh, at the macro economy, let's say there are certain changes that are happening. Uh, for example, it could be an interest rate move. It could be something to do with the currency. It could be something else. Depending on those factors, there will be a set of industries which will benefit. There will be probably another set of industries which will adversely be impacted. So we would try to focus on pockets which will probably gain from that macroeconomic event and take concentrated positions in those sectors and stocks which belong to that segment. Obviously, we will evaluate relative growth, valuation, everything, which is going to happen for every other fund. We will do that in this fund as well. Right? That's one level of uh, a special strategy. The other one could be at the industry level. Let's say there is an industry where there is a significant change in policy. Mm. at a particular point of time, uh, which could run into medium to long term in terms of an opportunity, then obviously you will take higher proportion of that particular industry into the portfolio. Right? There could be a regulatory change which is very, very positive for a particular segment of an industry. Again, that's a op special opportunity. When you go down at the company level, it could be any kind of corporate action. It could be a simple merger or a demerger. It could be a buyback announcement. It could be a management change which probably leads to a, a different uh, kind of a business uh, evolution over a period of time. And if you are early to catch on that trend, that's again a special opportunity. It could also be how a balance sheet changes in a particular company, right? Uh, I, I wouldn't like to call it a turnaround opportunity, but let's say there are companies which have higher financial leverage and, mm -hmm. and over a period of time, if operating leverage helps, the financial leverage goes down. So the level of debt in the book, if it goes down, all else being equal, that should get added to the equity value of the company. So that's again an opportunity that we can play. So these are some of the examples uh, uh, that can probably come into the fund uh, over a period of time. So an opportunity right now, and you know, since I have you here in the studio, uh, an opportunity and I think a big event right now is the budget which is coming up. How do you look at you know this period we've already seen uh, some pockets re responding whether it's fertilizers defense etc everyone's waiting to see what the first hundred days of the new government looks like what their theme is budget is going to be huge how do you see this see there are already several industry segments which have got a positive policy push mm. uh, those are already uh, kind of special opportunities from a medium to long-term perspective uh, there could also be newer ones which come up based on how some of the policies come up in the budget. However, as a fund, we are unlikely to speculate before an event and position, try to position ourselves in certain industries. But as soon as we get a clarity in terms of how a particular policy matter is going to be taken up for a particular industry, whether it's going to help them over the medium to long term, 
what are the kind of valuations. Once we make this complete analysis, then we will probably take those positions. Mm -hmm. So we are not going to bet on any particular event in a tactical or a speculative manner. Okay. But we will fundamentally evaluate and then take a position. Okay, so no tactical plays. All right, so now, apart from just the specific fund, mm -hmm. I wanted to get your view at, you know, where we are right now. Mm -hmm. Markets, I think, um, Traditionally, after a big event, and we saw a lot of ups and downs during the election results, etc., markets have settled, but then you tend to see some profit booking coming in. That's not where Indian markets are right now at all. Uh, and I think mentally, investors have already moved on to the next big event. What kind of opportunities do you see right now? You're coming up with a new fund. Um, people are hunting for opportunities where valuations are beginning to you know, raise questions. How do you look at the scenario? See, let's look at it from a slightly uh, longer term perspective. Mm -hmm. Indian economy is expected to grow at about 7.5% plus or minus a little bit over a period of time. I think uh, definitely that growth is going to be one of the highest growth rates that you will see in the entire globe for the next uh, four or five years. Uh, if you look at industries, industries are doing well and a range of industries are doing well. When you look at the corporate earnings growth trajectory, uh, it's been one of the strongest that we have seen in the recent times. And even when you look forward for the next two years, uh, the expected growth rates are in uh, mid-teens for the large cap and probably even higher for mid and small caps. So from that perspective, whether it's economy or corporate fundamentals, all of them seem to be very, very strong. Now it depends on what valuations you are comfortable and on a relative basis, whether you want to go into one particular pocket or the other. So as far as market valuations are concerned, clearly uh, there is expensiveness in some pockets of the market, uh, more so when the liquidity uh, goes down or where uh, the, the float is less. Mm. Right. Otherwise, uh, most of the large caps seem to be broadly overall around the historical valuation range. So in terms of valuation risk, that is more prominent in mid and small caps and as you go down the uh, uh, market capitalization curve. So there you will have to take a call on relative uh, effectiveness of, of a small cap or a large cap. Depending on which are the available opportunities, uh, we will also keep valuation in mind and then take a position. When you talk about companies with a smaller float, um, uh, you know, one way to look at it is uh, public sector companies. Uh, some of them with a smaller float and have run up uh, astronomically. So if I were to ask you about the themes that you're seeing as interesting right now, I'm wondering what you think about defense, uh, where there is a very clear policy push. We have to wait and see what actually comes out, etc. But themes like defense, financials, um, any of these ideas that you like right now, or you can, you can give us some clarity and add to that list? Uh, I don't want to uh, uh, preempt the portfolio construction, but yes, uh, these are some of the industry segments where there has been not, definitely... Not in the context specifically of the fund. Yes. Just your view. Uh, definitely. There is a, a very, very significant policy change that has happened in uh, defense segment. And as we see it, uh, 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 there is a positive outcome uh, based on that policy change. Uh, at a point of time in the recent past, we were all completely dependent on imports for most of our defense uh, purchases. Now the situation has completely changed. No more we are dependent on imports to the same extent. There are several export opportunities that are coming up. The level of indigenization has gone up. Uh, so have been the valuations. So it's not that uh, uh, you, can, uh, you can be blind towards uh, valuations and you can just look at the positive policies and you buy it. You will have to make those stock specific uh, evaluation and wherever you believe that the current valuations are justified and over the medium to long term there is a sustainability of those increased level of earnings, uh, those companies should be invested into. So, so defense, you will have to cherry pick. What about some of the other themes, such as consumptions, financial, any of the uh, sectors or themes that you think have a lot more left in them right now? Uh, clearly, if there is one pocket in the market which is uh, probably uh, comfortable in terms of valuations, I would say uh, large cap private banks. Mm. Uh, that's one segment where a lot of outflows uh, have been seen in the recent times. The sector or the sub-segment has not done as much as, uh, let's say, overall market or even the overall banking and financial space. Uh, definitely, there is a lot more safety in that pocket as compared to rest of the sectors, I would say. As far as consumption is concerned, uh, clearly it's going to be a dark horse in that sense. Uh, there is an expectation that uh, this year the monsoon is going to be a reasonable one and a, an above normal one. 
And if that were to pan out, uh, there will be a little bit of uh, uh, improvement in terms of rural consumption and, and uh, trends that you would see. So that's again something that you will need to watch out for the next couple of quarters. If things go well, definitely consumption can also come back in terms of uh, 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 market. Okay, so consumptions is a bit of a dark horse. Um, uh, financials and private bank financials always uh, a favorite. I don't know if, uh, you know, one view is also that will FIIs or will funds come back directing at them and only then will you see a lift off. So do you think that's a bit of a you know, risk factor over there? Uh, Tamanna, I think uh, we need to focus more on domestic flows rather yeah. than just foreign flows. Uh, if you actually look at last two and a half years, uh, starting from calendar year 2022, the net inflows into Indian equities from foreign investors is almost zero. Right? But still the markets have moved up because of the earnings support and also the flows that we have seen from other parts of uh, uh, investment uh, complex. So to that extent, I think it's not right to just look at one segment of investors and say that uh, that's how the markets are going to move depending on that pool. And also if you look at uh, how uh, the entire market structure has changed, there was a point of time where uh, uh, foreign investors used to hold almost a quarter of our equity capital. Mm. right? And also in terms of flows, they were the dominant players. Yeah. That's when markets probably moved in line with what they uh, bought and sold. But now when you look at it, domestic institutions are as big as uh, foreign institutions just in terms of the equity stake that they hold in Indian companies. And also on a monthly basis, Indian flows are a lot more stickier and, and uh, uh, strong. So to that extent, that imbalance which was there in the market has uh, shifted. So that's where I don't think we need to be looking only at foreign flows. Yes, those are important. We are a capital starved country. So to that extent, attracting foreign flows will be important. But I don't think that alone will determine the market mood. Yeah, yeah. The, the domestic investor has come uh, to be a driving force, I would say, in the markets, definitely. And um, you can see that with the number of new funds uh, that are yes. coming up, uh, because that appetite is definitely there. Thank you so much for speaking with Thank us today. Uh, Asha, great to have you in the studios as well. Now, in this leg of the show, we're speaking with Santosh Joseph. He's the founder of Germinate Investor Services. Santosh, great to have you on. Uh, in the first part, we were discussing um, Kotak's uh, new fund offer, the new opportunities fund, really. And we were speaking with Harsha Upadhyay, the CIO, who was in our studios. But I want to get your take, um, Santosh, on opportunities fund as a theme. And uh, if you have any view on the Kotak fund specifically. So the special opportunities fund in in this particular market, uh, you know, seems more or less uh, in line with what the economy actually is going through. You know, we just uh, out of the big election uh, mindset, which is the big elephant in the room, is now sorted out. Which means we got a clear runway for five years. Now I think uh, India as an economy is going through a massive change, massive progress, and massive shift. And therein lies uh, the the opportunity to you know, actually spot special opportunities in every sector, in every industry, in every company and make the most of it and thereby giving rise to a fund of this sort where, uh, you know, people can launch a fund to uh, at some level, you know, double down on an opportunity that normally would get uh, covered a little less in a diversified equity like a flexi cap or a multi cap fund. So therefore, I think it makes sense considering that we are in for a long run and we are long term bullish structurally and trend wise. Coming to Kotak, I think they've got a history of uh, uh, a great equity culture and uh, both Harsha, the fund manager and Nilesh have done a phenomenal job in terms of building up the, the entire equity book, good performance, good fund. And I think for an investor who's looking specifically uh, to you know maximize on this uh, India story, especially the special opportunities that are, as we speak, unfolding, will unfold and give an opportunity to create that edge into the portfolio, it is an opportunity for them to consider. Hmm. Okay. Uh, just to understand, uh, Santosh, this is for high risk uh, appetite investors? I won't say it's essentially high risk. I would say it's more for the discern, discerning investors who hmm. actually understand the concept of a special situations. Now, it's not that special situation stocks don't exist in other funds. They do. The weightages, the exposure and the theme varies. Now, in a special situations fund, you are hunting for those opportunities where you can double down on 
uh, one as a portfolio manager in the stocks in the portfolio, two as an investor, you're seeking for that extra edge, extra alpha to be a little more aggressive. So I think it is for the discerning investor, it is not that mass market fund, it is someone who wants a specific view. Mm, all right. Um, so let's get to our uh, queries from our viewers and uh, address them with Santosh Joseph today. Roshan Zamir writes in to us, he's 55 and his uh, goal is that he wants to invest 10,000 rupees in mutual funds for the next five years. Can you recommend me a few schemes is what he said. No other um, clarity about himself or if there's any larger goal there. But if you start this very, very basic query, Santosh, what would you uh, advise, Roshan? So for Roshan, who's starting off, I think we have to appreciate him. Still, there are people willing to start an SIP uh, and not be worried about the market movements. So uh, Roshan, I think you should begin with, let's say, a flexi cap or multi cap, and maybe even add a little bit of uh, a fund which has got international exposure. So let's say uh, a flexi cap front from HDFC, a multi cap front from Nippon, and maybe even add a parik parik a parak parik uh, flexi cap fund which has got a little bit of international exposure. Now these flexi and multi cap funds would inbuilt have uh, a fair bit of exposure to mid cap and small cap. And once you are comfortable with this SIP running for two or three years, and maybe depending on the risk capital, you can maybe add another one or two mid cap and small cap. But for starters, a flexi cap, a multi cap, and the Parak Parik long term equity, which has got international exporter, exposure should be a good fund to begin with. Mm, all right. Srikanth is uh, the next viewer who's written in. He's 63 years and uh, his goal is lump sum return. Says, I have two ongoing SIPs and I would like to start an additional one of 25,000 rupees. I would like to use this money for overseas travel every year. Can you recommend a few funds? He gives the details of his current portfolio as well, which is on your screen, and says that can my current portfolio give me a 15% annual return so uh, all those details there of his current sips as well Santosh I think that's such a cool goal uh, very clearly he wants to travel every year and wants to save for that overseas travel it is a cool goal for two reasons one he's got a goal to use the money most people are having goals only to invest money and seldom do we have goals to withdraw money and spend it and enjoy it i think so shrikant has done a good job for himself of having a goal to invest and having a goal to spend it and enjoy second thing shrikant is all of us want 15 percent or more uh, you have to be a little rational about your expectations and coming to the uh, the the most critical part that what you do for the extra twenty five thousand sip that you want to do i'd suggest just that considering you already got the flexi cap uh, sorted, add a mid cap fund, maybe a Bothiel Oswal mid cap fund will be good both from the mid cap space and even the, the kind of stocks that the portfolio has got should add value uh, to your existing portfolio. And uh, every year you should figure out what is the amount of money that you need for your holiday, take it out, spend it and continue with your SIPs to keep replenishing that money so that you also have the benefit of saving and making your money grow and also taking out the money as and when you need for your travels and uh, enjoy your foreign holidays. Okay, enjoy your foreign holidays. I'm glad that uh, you are saving for it and that you have a goal. Very quickly, last question. 45 years old, uh, Bharat has written in, kids' education is the goal. Ask if he's chosen the right funds and is this, the al is this allocation correct to achieve lump sum returns? Those details on your screen, they're already with Santosh. There's a small, there a couple of small cap funds. Um, and uh, one mid cap fund. Do you think too much focus on small cap funds? I can see f three small cap funds and one mid cap fund, uh, Santosh. Yeah, so Bharat, the thing is that uh, I think maybe the recency of the performance has possibly led you to have too many mid and small cap funds. Now, while you must be enjoying the, the returns that comes from these, just be a little cautious. Don't get carried away. For someone who's long-term and your age suggests that you can continue for long-term, uh, please also add some uh, large cap exposure through multi-cap and flexi-cap. Uh, it'll just help you in, in, in rough times in the markets. Uh, not every time will be like what we are experiencing right now where we had a massive move in mid and small caps. So for the sake of uh, stabilizing your portfolio and also protecting you from a uh, sharp downside as and when it may occur, uh, you will do well to be uh, well placed between mid and large and small cap. And uh, if you just continue adding uh, a large uh, multi cap or a flexi cap to this, you should uh, be good even with these mid caps continuing. Just adjust the funds and you'll be good.
Okay, thank you so much, Santosh, for joining us today. That's all the time we have, but numbers on our screen, so you can write in to us. Remember, you'll find us same time, same place, Monday to Friday, so we look forward to seeing you soon. But for now, we'll take a break. A lot more on the other side. Stay tuned to NDTV Profit.